This presentation is about the Italian luxury designer and manufacturer Brunello Cuccinelli and represents assignment two of the Business Ethics and Leadership course of the International School of Management. The aims and purposes of this presentation and discussion will be to develop a recent history in, uh, in corporate behavior in the areas of business ethics and practices, and ask the questions, is leadership failing business enterprises and their stakeholders? Does Brunello Cuccinelli offer an alternative model to the shareholder theory of modern corporate practice? And can companies build enterprises that do well by doing good? This particular company was inspiring to me because I wasn't aware of Brunello Cuccinelli at all until, uh, as a business, uh, until uh, of this case. Uh, the presentation today aims to explore the leadership characteristics of Brunello Cuccinelli and its namesake, discuss the significant role of defining moments, quote-unquote, in the lives of leaders and their companies, and to show how Brunello Cuccinelli converted a defining moment as a young man into a sustainable, robust company of wealth and value. I'd also like to discuss the idea of generalizing the Cuccinelli model for turning around flagging company performance using ethics and good business practices as a starting point. The foundations of leadership at Brunello Cuccinelli were impressive in that he had a high aspirational reach and vision. He said, we can be a generation that makes business better. His goal was one of long-term development. His personal values and goals were intoned in the phrase, this is my life, to look after the soul, grounded tremendously in the philosophical tradition of Immanuel Kant and other uh, great thinkers of the past. He also had, as his part of his defining moments early in his life, an experience of observing his father going to work at a factory and being humiliated and debased totally and, and becoming very unhappy. This reminds me of the importance of defining moments as starting points for a new vision, a new response. Joseph Bataracho, in 1998, in an article called The Discipline of Building Character, pointed out that our feelings and intuitions are both a form of intelligence and a source of insight. And I believe that Brunello Cuccinelli uh, actually translated this idea of feelings and intuitions into an entire vision and practice and set of actions that developed a company as well as redeveloped an entire community. It seems to me after reading the case and studying the material surrounding it that the change agent involved in Brunello Cuccinelli is organizational culture. The attributes of organizational culture uh, are those that Manzoni um, discussed in his article. It's now generally accepted, he said, that organizations that enjoy lasting success do so in part because they have developed a strong and positive organizational culture. The culture comes down to a common way of thinking, which drives a common way of acting. This is one freely chosen by the participants and one that is engaged in openly with full knowledge. The specific collection of values and norms that are shared by people and groups in an organization and that control the way they interact with each other and with stakeholders outside the organization is an excellent definition. The important thing there is that first and foremost, there are artifacts of value that the people within the culture exchange among themselves and then with the outside world. I think Brunello Cuccinelli has developed such a culture of exchange of wealth creation from creative, beautiful, well-designed objects that are uh, crafted by uh, artisans uh, recruited from the local population and allowed to engage in their trade from where they are. That exchange of value then is reflected in the outside world and becomes an important part of Cuccinelli's culture. 
The culture is grounded in the philosophy of the leader. In fact, in a remarkable uh, sort of way, Bernello Cuccinelli uh, actually was a great student of philosophy. And my analysis uh, suggests that he has three uh, key influences um, that run through his life and his operation of his business. The first one is the rights and responsibility based influence that uh, is one focused on the individual and the individual's responsibility and perception of responsibility to uh, his obligations. It's a rational approach and one that involves thinking as much as feeling. But quickly behind that, Brunello Cuccinelli uh, has a relationship-based citizen-in-community uh, influence also. That is one that is justice-oriented. What is a just society? What should a just society be? What should a set of just practices be? These thread through Brunello Cuccinelli's um, life and his practices uh, thoroughly. The last one is a reputation-based influence. That involves the well-known phrase servant leadership, that is, to pursue virtuous activities that yield uh, a happy life. Happiness being, as Aristotle said, an activity of the soul in accordance with reason and virtue. Because Brunello Cuccinelli was so influenced by Immanuel Kant, I included the categorical imperative here as one of the key artifacts of my observation of the Cuccinelli culture. Act only according to that maxim by which you can at the same time will that it should become universal law. Brunello Cuccinelli believes that generalizing the good practices that the company has for local artisans, for the dignity of work, for as he says, ennobling work, um, is a way that he believes should become universal. In this way, he thinks that the actions of people should be to universalize these sorts of high standards. Moral excellence comes about as a result of habit, according to Aristotle. You become just by performing just actions, temperate by performing temperate actions, and brave by performing brave actions. This is from Aristotle's in Manzoni's article in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. I've created a graphic here to describe Cuccinelli's culture. Uh, I mentioned that the rights and responsibility influence as uh, most intoned by Immanuel Kant, W.D. Ross, and Plato uh, asks the questions, how should the world be? What takes the long view and focuses on ideals that we fulfill over a long period of time. That's the obligation that we have to our, each other and to society. The relationship and community influence uh, is most intoned by John Rawls and by St. Augustine, among others. And it asks the questions, what is a just society? What are the best ways for all to thrive within society? How can we all do well by doing good? And the last influence is reputational. That's most influenced by Aristotle and by Alistair MacIntyre. It asks the questions, how do I serve others and myself at the same time? What are the ethical requirements of my role? That is, Cuccinelli asks the role of the leader uh, and the founder of a company, as well as the role of the employee or the role of the artisan. Cuccinelli says our goal was to give moral and economic dignity to work, and work should ennoble us, he said. We should not just plan for the next three months, which was one of the most impressive of his statements, or three years, but for the next three centuries. That long-term view is very much what he felt his obligation was, and that people were entitled to uh, expect from him as the leader. The clarity of shared expectations that Cuccinelli uh, acted upon and invoked in Solomeo, the community that he built the company from, was a commitment to an identity, as well as the commitment to craft, quality, and creativity, and his overarching commitment to beauty. Uh, in fact, he 
talks about Dostoevsky's comment in The Idiot, uh, beauty will save the world. And in this regard, beauty becomes the classical definition of beauty. That is an activity of the soul. Uh, beauty becomes something that is a, uh, an honest expression of a function as well as uh, the commitment to a purpose. Um, Cuccinelli's uh, shared expectations should be judged by not what uh, it does and has done, uh, not by what it might do or could do. In other words, look at Cuccinelli by what the company has done and he has done and continues to do, not uh, what it might do in the future. And I think you'd find a very uh, morally uh, objective and morally uh, intentional kind of enterprise. What is Brunello Cuccinelli is a question that I asked myself. Well, I felt, first of all, he's a designer and a builder. And a design is a kind of language that the designer uses to give their work meaning. That comes from the Design Museum in London and the book Designer, Maker, User. And it defines beauty as fitness for a purpose and an honest expression of a function. It seems that the ennobling aspects of work, in the words of Brunello Cuccinelli, should be beautiful. In other words, they should be elegant. And they should be fit for a purpose and be an honest expression of a function. As a result, Brunello Cuccinelli has incorporated the local artisans of the community in Umbria um, into the business and actually created an entire supply chain that has benefited them as well as benefited the company. To Brunello Cuccinelli, it's more than a business. Human nature isn't just about self-interest. It also includes sympathy, empathy, friendship, love, and the desire for social approval. John Mackey wrote that in the article included in our package of resources for the course. And he actually uh, believes that that is very much entangled with human nature and our objective. And in that regard, he's very much like Brunello Cuccinelli. There are new defining moments created out of actions that a person like Cuccinelli takes. Uh, my impression is that Brunello Cuccinelli aspires to be that kind of a company that defines the standard by which business excellence is determined. In other words, he aspires to be the standard seeker or the standard maker for how businesses should operate. As he said, so I've always imagined a business that, yes, of course, makes profit, but does it ethically, with dignity and morality. Who is the person, if, if Brunello Cuccinelli are these aspects, these three aspects of, uh, of its life, who is Brunello Cuccinelli? Well, he's a charismatic leader who combines his personal power and positional power for advantage and benefit. The article about leadership uh, and ethics that Janet Randall uh, discussed uh, talks about positional power and personal power uh, and using those two aspects as leverage. And Brunello Cuccinelli does that marvelously. For the 30 years he's been in business, he's used his positional power as the leader, as the legitimate power center of the company using the rewards of being able to offer employment and benefit to the community of Solomeo as well as the artisans that live within it, and uh, to include the rewards that he can mete out as a result of being the person who can create um, an opportunity for people to earn wealth. His personal power, however, becomes the most significant. His charismatic uh, role as an expert designer and his taste and uh, ability to convert a vision into reality uh, also becomes part of his referent leadership ability, his referent power, that is his charismatic ability to excite other people for, um, for the benefit of, um, for the benefit of, um, of all those around us and the common good, which very much he is interested in. Brunello Cuccinelli builds associates' loyalties, and I think this is one of the most impressive aspects of the business. 
because through what he's done by building these centers of excellence and these commitments to, uh, to the community as well as to the humanities in the community, he has created a clarity of his values and beliefs and those of the organization, and they build commitment and job satisfaction. As long as you can clarify your uh, values and beliefs and align them with those of the organization, and allow people the opportunity to align their personal values with those of the organization, job satisfaction goes up. Kuzis and Posner in 2007 did a study about that, the results of which I've included in this uh, presentation. Brunello Cuccinelli solidified this commitment by the actions that underpin uh, his values and beliefs and those of the firm. The combination of clarity and action urges all employees to clarify their own values and beliefs, and this contributes to the commitment to the culture, which, is, uh, which I discuss next. Building long-term renewable commitment, clarity and alignment of personal and organizational values is what I have here. As the clarity of organizational values becomes more uh, open to everyone, all the stakeholders, and the clarity of personal values by the leader as well as the stakeholders goes up, you can see in the upper right-hand quadrant of this circle, uh, you can see that the, uh, that the degree of organizational commitment goes up also. The clarity of organizational and personal values is high, and the clarity of organizational values is high, and that contributes to commitment. This is the kind of a fact base that you can use to potentially hypothesize the generalization of the Brunello Cuccinelli uh, enterprise to other organizations, either startups or perhaps even turnarounds. You can see that even though uh, Brunello Cuccinelli might be extraordinarily clear about the organizational values, if the personal values of the stakeholders aren't clear about how they align with that of the organization, then there won't be as much a commitment to the um, there won't be as much of a commitment to uh, the overall uh, enterprise by the individual itself. I think this is very much germane to the discussion. Um, the Cuccinelli business model is sustainable, and in my belief, it is transferable. It depends on the will and the ability of the leader to actually uh, make the uh, transition uh, to another place. I think it's an inspiring model of designing and building a sustaining culture. Uh, for its uniqueness in building an actual place, Solomeo, that becomes infused in the culture and serves the brand. Uh, in this way, we can all do well by doing good, and the common good was certainly, uh, was certainly achieved in Solomeo. Um, it becomes sustainable and transferable because of uh, the clarity of purpose among all the stakeholders. There's no question about what the purpose is, it seemed, in the videos of the employees and, and the media discussing Brunello Cuccinelli. Um, the subsidiarity is a unique application of the skills and the crafts and the artisans surrounding the countryside of Solomeo and Brunello Cuccinelli's ability to bring them in to the enterprise. The, uh, the thing that comes to mind is a little bit the growth of Inditex in Galicia, Spain, the parent company of Zara, uh, because in the same way, local artisans were used in the early days of Inditex to, and probably still are, to... Um, to develop the unique approach that Inditex has to fast fashion, that it was able to take occurring trends and translate them to affordable, available products. And this very much uh, seems to me to be the same sort of idea that subsidiarity had with Cuccinelli in Solomeo. Uh, I think it's uh, transferable and sustainable for actualizing stakeholder value on an equal par with shareholder value. Uh, one should not be exclusive to the other, 
because the stakeholders enable the growth of wealth and the value that the stakeholders have in seeing their uh, achievements actually take root and take heart in what they do contributes to wealth creation. And it's sustainable and transferable for creating recurring value and accretion to all the stakeholders. And in one of my favorite quotations from Albert Camus uh, in The Myth of Sisyphus, it seems to me that the Guccelli business model is transferable and sustainable because it actually lives the truths that it, um, that it espouses. In other words, we always end up by having the appearance of our truths is, I think, a great example of Brunello Cuccinelli. So in my estimation, the model is sustainable and transferable. And it represents an inspiring case study of what's possible with the will and the ability of the leader to actually inspire people to be the best that they can be. Thank you.